afternoon is Pastor Al, First Baptist Church of Bernalillo. Uh, went outside a while ago, my phone sitting there, said 95 degrees. It's, that tells you it's been hot when you think 95 degrees is cool. Uh, but I was uh, just sitting outside for a second before I did this. But I, I appreciate everybody checking, you know, getting on line and, and following with our devotion. I pray that, the, that this devotion is a help to you encouragement. So let's get on with our word today. We've been talking about the full armor of God, and um, and I, I believe that as we see ourselves in these battles uh, of life and changes and uh, the different things we've talked about, uh, forgotten country in our sermon the last two weeks, um, I believe it's important that we understand that things have changed in such a way, uh, and they continue to change. Uh, I've told, I made mention of it yesterday and then also in my sermon Sunday that the changes that are coming are, um, they're, they're pro prophetic and, and they are from prophecy. And, and I believe, especially if this money thing goes through and they, they stop letting us use our money, uh, it will impact us in a way. We think the economy is bad now. Uh, what are you going to do? When you have to make your mind up whether or not to go to the grocery store, knowing that uh, they're not going to let you spend your money. But anyway, I'm less, I'm frustrated with the system and everything that's going on, and that's the reason why I think it's important that we understand this this armor that uh, that that Paul is so uniquely uh, painted a picture that we can use these different pieces of armor in a way that we understand that the we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against powers, authority, those in authority, uh, and those that are evil uh, from the spiritual realm. So we understand that we've got a sin problem in the world. Uh, David or uh, the devil is on the loose, and we need to be smart about it and have our armor. So today we're going to pick up our word. Today is helmet. Uh, we're going to pick up uh, verse 17. It says, and take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. Um, how is this helmet useful and, you know, about salvation? But I got a little story back when I was in the Navy um, on my first submarine. Uh, uh, it was a friend of mine that I worked with. He was, he was on the other crew, but I knew him real well. And uh, he went home one afternoon while we were working on the uh, the sub and everything. And a friend of his had come over with a motorcycle, and he just wanted to take it for a spin around the block, not even get out on the highway. So he chose not to put a helmet on. And when he was pulling back in the yard, he got into some soft ground. The motorcycle fell, and he hit his head on a... a it was a telephone pole laying on the side of the road there in the driveway. And it did damage enough that it broke, it, you know, the helmet. Had he had a helmet on, chances are he would have survived. So that gives us understanding that a helmet, sometimes it's not comfortable. It's not something we want to do. And my brother's a motorcycle. He, he likes to ride motorcycles. And I can remember a day that, he wouldn't wear a helmet, and um, but I believe he would tell you right now that a brain bucket is very important when you're riding a motorcycle. So how does that going to help us with this uh, helmet that we're talking about in battle? Well, the same thing. If we get into a battle and somebody hits us in the head and we don't have some sort of protection, chances are it's going to be a fatal blow. And I believe that we need to protect our head because, one, we make our choices with our heads, right? Uh, some of us are hard, harder headed than others, but we still need protection and we need to understand this helmet. And it kind of goes back to, as Paul is painting this picture with the, uh, the helmet, he referred back, uh, I believe he thought back to Isaiah. We talked about this the other day in Isaiah 59, verse 17. It says that he, God, put on the, uh, the righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head, and the verse goes on, but um, I believe that we need to uh, 
uh, being a little bit more mindful. We've talked about the, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, um, the shield of faith, and all these things come together. Now we, we're going to put something on our heads to protect it. Uh, this, but the, we got to get to a place that we understand that he gives us this to save us. To give us that helmet that protects our minds and our our uh, our physical protection. So the, in the army, they they would often uh, wear these helmets, and they would have different insignias on them that would either talk about ceremonial helmets or different designs or insignias on them that stated what part of the army they were with, and also uh, how much they had been in battles. So I believe the Lord, if we look at salvation, you know, the helmet of salvation, if we take those, that thing of uh, protection for our heads and also it signifies about where our place is or, or where, how much we've been in the battle. But salvation basically means this is to be saved or delivered from something. If we look at scripture in the Old Testament, in Exodus 14, 13, the Lord always protected his people, but it says, and Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm and see the salvation, or if we take that definition we just said, delivered from something, uh, delivered of the Lord, which he will mark for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall never see again. He protected, he delivered them from the Egyptians. Uh, Micah chapter seven uh, says, for the son treats the father with contempt and the daughter rises up against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemy are the, man, uh, are the men of his own house. But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for God for my salvation, my deliverance, my protection, if you will. God will hear me. Rejoice not over me. O oh, my enemy, when I fall, I will rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. You see, the Lord wants to give us that salvation. He wants to deliver us from the things that oppose us. But I want us to get to the New Testament and what it says there. You see, the New Testament uh, it gives us that deliverance from what, what we know as an eternal death or the penalty of sin. Uh, and deliverance into the kingdom of God. So uh, this penalty of sin, how can we be saved from that penalty? Well, Romans 6, 23 tells us, uh, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And in Romans 5, uh, starting with verse 8, but God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, since therefore we have not, been justified by his blood or now been justified by his blood much more shall we be saved for him uh by him for the from the wrath of god for if we or if while we were enemies we were reconciled or brought back to god by the death of his son much more uh now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by this life there's that you know, delivered from John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should uh, believe in Him, or that whoever believes in Him, should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. So we see that God wants to protect us and deliver us from this eternal. Um, condemnation uh the the death from our sins we have to pay for it our sin breaks god's uh laws in which he has placed placed them in the garden of eden they were broken and it has caused death from man to, to man to man to man it's it's a it's a life going uh it's a blood disease but sin is so vile that god it requires a death penalty if you stand before the lord and, and stand it to protect yourself or to uh, defend yourself, uh, you're going to be put to death. And that's eternal separation from God and cast into the lake of fire eventually. But God's love and his mercy provided for us, uh, and it's a substitute, and that's Jesus Christ, our creator, who was willing to die in our place to be saved. We need a savior. So salvation, savior, you have to have those two 
So how do we receive this salvation? Just two verses real quick to help us understand that. Acts 2 verse 38 says, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, By grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. It's important that we understand this salvation. It cannot be earned cannot be bought, cannot come from putting your name on a roll. It becomes from a place that we obey his law through the faith and uh, ask the Lord to forgive us. It's that simple. And there's where we have to, to uh, get to a place that we understand that our salvation is permanent. Uh, and I believe, and I've said all this to get to where I'm wanting to be now. I'm talking to the church and that means at some point or another, you accepted the, the free gift of salvation. And, you ex and you're looking to put this armor on. And you, why would you protect your head? And why would he say a helmet of salvation? Well, this is it. We have to have that understanding that our salvation is strong enough that it lasts forever. And that in order for us to be do well and survive the battle, we have to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves first we get saved, and then we have to make sure we're taking care of ourselves. Now we even need to look to the future. And a few of the verses that I've, I've got pulled up to help us see this is, uh, the New Testament says we have been saved. Ephesians 2, 5, even when we were dead in trespasses, uh, made alive together with Christ by grace, you have been saved. So that means we have been saved. We accepted Jesus as our Savior, okay? And then we can look in 1 Corinthians 1, 18, and it says we are being saved. And what it says there is for the word of the cross is folly to those that are, are perishing, but to us who are being saved is the power of God. We're living life today and we're going through life and we're being saved because we know that we are not going to be cast into the lake of fire. So we are being saved. We have that in our mindset. So we want to live and honor the Lord with all our things. It kind of goes back to our, our feet being prepared or ready to stand on, on the commandments of God. And then we see that we will be saved. Matthew 10, 22, it says, and you will be halted by all of, uh, for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. So what all this means, and I believe Paul does a good job there. If we go back to Ephesians chapter 2, uh, he wrote this. He said, but God being rich in mercy because of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive again with Jesus Christ by grace. You have been saved. And we just said that verse, but it goes on. It says, and raises us up with him and see, uh, seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own, it is the gift of God. So we can see that we have been saved, we are being saved, and we're, we will be saved, but that uh, 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, For the word of the cross is folly, and to those who perishing, but as to us, we are being saved with the power of God. Do you feel the helmet of salvation? Do you feel the power knowing that you have been saved? And I believe that is the reason why Paul says the helmet of salvation, because we need to have the mindset that we need. And this mindset is very important as far as our salvation. One, if we're a child of God, we're joint heirs with Jesus, and we have a place in his purpose, uh, Romans 8, 28. And, and, but another one of my verses that I quote all the time, Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That thing, the helmet is going to protect that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, this involves having God's laws written in our minds, our hearts, meditating on them so that we can better follow them. Hebrews 10, 16 tells us, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. And then Psalm 119, starting with verse 97, oh, how I love your law. 
It is my meditation all the day. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your te testimonies are my meditation. If we protect our mind, put the helmet of salvation on, and we meditate on those things in which he has protected us through our salvation, filled with the Holy Spirit, we have his holy word. Why would we not want to do that? So, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse, starting with verse 8 says, But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet of hope of salvation. For God has not uh, destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. So that salvation that we get through, uh, or the helmet, and, and it's because you know, it says that verse, it says, whether we be awake or asleep, if we're living here today, we have a purpose. It is to live for the Lord and to give him praise, honor, and glory. If we asleep or are dead, we're with Jesus. Our salvation is there with him. So let us make sure that we work uh, this hope that we have. It works like a helmet to protect our minds from the discouragement of this this and despair of this world. Um, if we went out in this world, we didn't think about the salvation we have. And I, I believe there's some people who think they're Christians and have professed to be Christians. They live like the devil, except when they're at church. They're not putting on the helmet of salvation because their salvation is found on a fire insurance policy, I believe. Uh, I'm not a judge. I can judge fruit. Uh, but I do believe there are some people that have fooled themselves to thinking they have salvation in Jesus Christ when all they have is a fear of hell and they don't want to go there. So let's make sure when we go out into the world that we put this helmet on to protect our minds. That salvation is there to save us and to protect us. As we said, that the definition of uh, salvation is to deliver us. John or Jesus, when he was in the upper room, you know, it'd be easy, and we've, we've said this time and time before, uh, it'd be easy for for us if the Lord was just to call us home once we accept Jesus as our Savior, but he doesn't do that. And as Jesus was about to go to the cross in John 17, there in the upper room, he's praying. And um, he said, uh, he, he prays to God, and he says, I, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. Once we become citizens of heaven, we need that protection. And we and, and Jesus asked and prayed for us. And in that same prayer, he prayed for us today. Philippians 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We need to live knowing that we're different. We need to live that with the understanding we're not of this world. So Jesus said, you know, Paul, Paul said there as he wrote to the church in Philippi, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, that we're here to do the Father's business. And we also know, as we've heard in a couple of Paul's uh, analogies here, that we have an enemy. And that's not a, it's no secret. It's not something new. But uh, 1 Peter 5, 8, 9, we quote this quite a bit. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he, he may devour. Resist him. Amen. Fight against him. Steadfast in your faith. There's them shoes digging in, right? Knowing that the same suffering we experience by our brotherhood in the world. We have to work together and we have to, we're in an army. Amen. Matthew 13, 22, now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and for the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. If we have this helmet of salvation and we're protecting our mind, we can fight off these thorns and thistles that will choke out the word. You remember the, uh, uh, the parable about the, the, fertile soil or the seed, the, the sower, and there were some that were cast and they, the thorns and the thistles come up and they choked out 
uh, the truth of the word and, and it died. And I believe we need to have this, hel uh, this helmet on that we can protect ourselves and continually be growing. So with that all being said, our verse for today is Philippians 2.12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, I don't want you to think that fear and trembling means we're to be scared of God and we're to be afraid. I'm afraid, and, and I believe what we, what we need to look at this verse is work out your own salvation, your, your deliverance with fear and trembling, fear that you may disobey God, trembling that you might lose that fellowship with God, not your salvation, but your fellowship. And if we do that and we put on the helmet of salvation, protect our minds, and we go into the world and we fight against this devil, he's there. Uh, we have the world to fight against. And you don't have to look very hard to find how the world is turned upside down. But ourselves, I believe the helmet of salvation gives us something practical, something that we can hold to, to personally that will, uh, we have to have the mindset to put it on for protection against all these things that are going on around us, uh, you know, our minds and everything. So. In, in place of attitude of adjustment, I had a few questions here. Um, how well am I expressing, uh, expressing godly love? And all these things will show the character of having the helmet of salvation on. And my outlook on life characterized, is my outlook on life characterized by joy or pessimism? A lot of people, pessimistic people out here. Am I a peacemaker or a troublemaker? Ooh, we could ask that question of a lot of people today. Am I patient, even in stressful situations? Do I express kindness to others through willing acts of service? What kind of media do I allow into my life? Does the entertainment I enjoy line up with God's standards? Do I stick with my commitments, even when they become difficult to me? Is my approach to selling disagreements to verbally assault the other person, or do I handle it with uh, things gently and with respect? And am I able to put what mean uh, what needs to be done before what I want to do? These are all questions. If if we're doing things in accordance with the the deliverance that we have, the the salvation that we have through Jesus Christ, that means we become Christ-like. And these things that I just brought up. You can rewind this later and, and write down the list. Uh, but answer these questions honestly. And if you're not doing these things, you're not thinking about them, you're not turning your brains on and aligning them with the scripture, that that belt of truth, amen, uh, and the, the readiness or the preparedness but with the shoes that we might be able to stand fast when we see we answer these questions in the breastplate of righteousness we're going to make mistakes along the way but we have this protection we have our our shield uh, of faith we trust that jesus did die for our sins and he changed us he made us a new creature and that faith and that we can push the devil back but we have to have that deliverance if we don't have the deliverance we don't have anything and our head will be uh, left out there in the open and we will die. Uh, my testimony story for this, and it just happened recently, uh, God used Judy to remind me to put on my helmet. You know, we're, she, we, we watch Eliana and she's, uh, she rides her bicycle and Judy has to tell her, put your helmet on. If you're going to ride the bicycle, put your helmet on. Well, she was next door. This was, uh, I, don't, I forget what was going on, but I stayed at the house and I turned on a movie and she walked in. She says, what in the world are you watching that for? And I got mad, but later the Lord slapped me upside the back of the head and it dawned on me that I didn't have my helmet on. I was allowing the garbage of this world to be run through my mind because I just wanted to sit there and veg. We can't ever let our guard down. We have to be thinking about this salvation that we have. Let's put our helmet on, amen? 
Let's be protected against the wiles of the devil. Let's be in a way that we want to protect our minds. Let this mind be in us that was also in Jesus Christ. That's where we need to be with our helmet. Amen. We're saved. Let's act like it. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your love. The armor you give us. But Lord, it, none of it would be worth anything if we didn't have salvation. We didn't have Jesus. And it's a gift. It's a free gift. And you have saved us. I've heard it sometimes. We need to be saved from ourselves. And that's what you have promised us. But we have to turn and meditate on the things that you've told us through your word and the convictions that we have through the Holy Spirit. And I pray that we would be alive enough that we would change and that we would adapt to your way of living instead of ours or the world's. Protect us this day and this time, this present evil that we see going on. I pray that you would give us the ability to stand together, uh, making sure each other has their armor on properly. And I pray that you would just give us conviction to move in the way that we should, that we might see some come to know who Jesus is and get saved and be delivered themselves. Give us that opportunity, Lord. Times we're being closed in again and uh, we can't get out. And, and I just pray that you would open up the, the, the means that we can witness and see some people get saved. We pray that you would just empower us, give us the courage, give us the, just the enthusiasm that we need. We love you. We pray that we would always be a witness of you and for you. We thank you for your love. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I appreciate y'all being with me tonight. Y'all be safe tonight. Have a good night. Rest. Uh, be back with me tomorrow. We're going to talk about the sword of the spirit. Yeah, the word of God. Amen. Y'all be good. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Take care.